and I'm back in Los Angeles. For those just tuning in on this random person's video, I'm Trizzy, and I just did a race on the Great Wall of China. One of the coolest things I can say I've done. Running this race was unbelievable, and I'm glad I pushed myself to make this dream race happen. Literally, like more than a decade ago, I was just joking around and I said, one of my dreams is to race on the Great Wall of China. Later, I found that to be an actual event. And years later, I knew it was time to run on the Great Wall of China. Prior to this race, I've ran one full marathon and several half marathons. Took a seven year break and now I'm back. I think, well, that's the plan. So originally, the race was supposed to be on Sunday, April 15th, but about two weeks before my flight to China, the race organizers reached out and mentioned that the Chinese government completely changed the race date to the following Sunday, April 22nd. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I've just been scammed. Uh, Cause I've never heard of a race postponement being so last minute. My flight back to LA was initially Friday, April 20th, and I was lucky enough to have the flexibility to adjust arrangements so I can run this race. There's no way that I was going with other options, which was getting a refund or transferring my registration to the following year. My mind, my heart was set for 2024, Year of the Dragon, and I was already training for months. And although rearranging dates was a headache and a few extra hundreds of dollars, I'm grateful I was able to experience this long-awaited event. And since I rearranged plans, hotels, and flights, I had to fly out the day after the race. Meaning, sitting on planes for a total of about 17 hours. When I was in motion, my body felt okay. But every time I would sit or be still for a few minutes, I noticed the stiffness and the soreness throughout my lower body. The area around my inner knees were the most sore. This was where I was about to cramp during towards the end of the race. I had no clue I could cramp there. <laughs> But luckily, it never fully cramped. And because I was sore around the knees, bending my knees felt like it was on fire. So much lactic acid built up in there, I'm guessing. Even when I did fire cupping a week before the race, the darkest circles were in those exact areas. So for our flights, we flew with China Airlines between Taipei, Taiwan and Beijing, China, which was about three to four hour flight, then flew with Starlux Airlines between Los Angeles, California and Taipei, Taiwan, a 14 hour flight going back to LA. To make sure I was able to conveniently get up and move around and stretch during the long flight, we paid extra for the exit row seats, which gave us a huge space in front of us with no seats. So I was able to stretch my legs and get up and do some standing exercises and stretches. Once I got back home, my jet lag was the worst I've ever had in a while. Usually from an international trip, right away, I'll hop back on my daily routine of waking up early and doing an exercise, which usually helps with adjusting my body to the time zone. But because my race day was the last day of the trip, and typically after a race, you should rest, I didn't hop back on my normal, usual routine when I got back home. Um, so I couldn't beat the jet lag. And with the combination of the race and a long travel day, I don't think I was mentally and physically the healthiest. I did my first movement after four days of being back, which was yoga, a light exercise. Then shot around on the basketball court on day five. All right, my first run since I've been back and since the race uh, took a week and a half for me to get back. So in total, I think my jet lag faded after 
after about two weeks, which normally I could combat my jet lag after three or four days. I'm a minimal runner. I prefer not to run with a fanny pack, a camelback, a vest, or anything. Even for my last full marathon, I ran with just my phone and a few sports shoes in my pocket. So if I were to do another great wall race, I would use a smaller water bottle instead of the 24 ounce one that I brought because I didn't realize how often the water stations were going to be during the race and they had this amazing electrolyte drink in a full bottle. It's pretty good. I'm gonna grab some after the race. I drank that um, instead of the liquid IV I prepared in my own water bottle. So the small one that I suggest to bring um, would be used as an emergency. It helps with packing lighter too. I would still suggest having a fanny pack with like a bottle holder to be hands-free, but also I'm weird and I'd rather run with a bottle or a phone or an Insta360 camera in my hand. If it were any other races, I probably wouldn't have a fanny pack, but because of the intensity of the Great Wall, it's better to be over-prepared than under. If it wasn't for the race postponement, the race would have happened in the middle of the trip. So I would have spent a week in Beijing prior to the race. Now, I think I would have just given myself three or four days after arriving in the country, then go run the race. Beijing is so big. You'll be spending a whole day at just one popular attraction and probably not even get to see the full place. So it gets very tiring. I practically spent two weeks sightseeing Beijing and Shanghai before my race and I felt physically off when it came time to race. My lower back stayed extremely tight throughout the race. My legs were heavy and I never felt the lightness in my strides like I did during training. And mentally, I was so drained. So my suggestion is to give yourself just three or four days to adjust to the time zone, then do your race, then enjoy the rest of your trip. For my training, I would have focused more on incline exercises. I did a great job of building stamina and endurance, keeping my mental healthy and running with my Insta360 camera. But even though I had a few incline trainings, I wish I had done more. The Great Wall of China has so many different levels of steepness, different size steps, and a variety of conditions of the wall structure. And all of those factors, they change so suddenly when you're on the wall. There isn't a proper way to train for the Great Wall unless you're training on the wall. It's doable if you're not aiming for a PR, because I did it, but it's so different than any other half or full marathons, unless you do a lot of unique endurance events. Nonetheless, this is something I could see myself doing again. I had so much fun looking back on the process of training, getting to China, racing on the Great Wall. There were a lot of unwanted things that happened that felt set me back a bit in my training process, but in the end, I came out on top. And to be exact, I finished the race in 16th place under the women's division. A few days after I got back home, I got an email from the race organizers that said, because of my placement, I won free shoes. The organizers that I registered through and communicated with was a third-party California-based company. And the primary race organization was based in China. And till this day, about a month after the race, I still haven't received my free shoes. So who knows if I'm 
gonna even get it because of the difficulty of the shipping internationally. I didn't even get my race results and photos up until a few days ago. And I practically had to reach out to whoever I could find on a uh, China-based app, WeChat, uh, to track down my results and photos. So if y'all know if I'm going to get my shoes, please let me know so I can have some hope. And if you are looking into doing this phenomenal race in the future, there are a few races that I came across during my research. The one I was registered through was rungreatwall.com. After taxes and fees, I paid $345 USD for a half marathon. They do have early bird specials, so make sure to keep that in mind. I obviously did not catch the early bird in time. And before I found out about this race, I was originally going to run with Albatross Adventures Marathon. Not sure which part of the Great Wall they run at though. Uh, this one is practically a tour package plus the race. They handle hotels, day of race transportation, um, post-race celebration, and daily itineraries. So the cost was at least 1700 US dollars. Uh, might be worth it if you don't want to plan anything for the trip. And let me say, planning for China is difficult because of the limited access foreigners have with Google Maps due to government restrictions of the internet. Another race you can look into is the Conquer the Wall. As I was trying to find a race that didn't include a tour package, a helpful YouTube viewer told me about Conquer the Wall. This was my initial choice, but because we had scheduling conflicts, in the month of May, I was lucky to have come across Ren Great Wall, which had an April date. I'm sure there's more Great Wall races, but these are the three that I came across. If you're interested in checking out how my training process was, I vlogged about it for three months, so you can view my marathon training vlog for the Great Wall of China playlist on my channel. I am a lover of travel as well, if you want to see and hear more about my travels, which will include goodies about China, please consider subscribing to me and my partner's YouTube travel channel, Maui and Trizzy. And if you love podcasts, particularly travel podcasts, I am a co-host of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast, available on YouTube and all major streaming podcast platforms. Hope this video and my experience gave you some insight on your future race on the Great Wall of China. So please stay connected. If we aren't already, you can find me on Instagram at Triz Inc. If you wanna see what's going on in my life and what my next fun race or event will be, subscribe to my channel for the journey. And thanks for watching and cheering me on.